The crimes of Lucy Letby shocked the UK and the world. She left a devastating trail of hurt, damage and grief. Join us today as we investigate what happened. We look at how the NHS failed to stop her. We look at her motives. We look at how she was caught and we look at the trial and conviction. Join us as we investigate the whole case of the most prolific child serial killer in modern British history. Join us as we look into the case of Lucy Letby, the killer nurse. Lucy Letby was born on 4th of January 1990 in Hereford, Herefordshire, the only child of a finance manager and an accounts clerk. She was educated at Aylstone School and Hereford Sixth Form College. She had had a very difficult birth herself and was, according to a friend who knew her since secondary school, very grateful for being alive to the nurses who would have helped save her life. This, the friend states, had led her to want to be a nurse all her life and that everything that she did was geared towards that ultimate goal of becoming a nurse. Letby pursued her education in nursing at the University of Chester, where she also worked as a student nurse during her three years of training, carrying out placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital and the Countess of Chester Hospital. Letby was the first member of her family to study at university and graduated in September 2011. Letby began working as a registered nurse at the neonatal unit of the Countess of Chester Hospital in 2012. In a 2013 staff profile, she said that she was responsible for caring for a wide range of babies requiring various levels of support and that she enjoyed seeing them progress and supporting their families. Letby also took part in a campaign to raise funds for a new neonatal unit at the hospital. Letby had two training placements at Liverpool Women's Hospital in late 2012 and early 2015, which came under investigation after her conviction. In June 2016, consultants asked management to remove her from clinical duties pending an investigation into her conduct. She had previously been moved from night to day shifts in April 2016 by the unit's ward manager. Letby was transferred to the patient experience team in July 2016 and later to the Risk and Patient Safety Office, working there until her arrest in 2018. Letby qualified to work with the infants who needed intensive care in 2015, the same year the suspicious incidents began. Letby had told others that she found non-intensive care work boring and sought the action of the intensive care unit. When she was moved to day shifts, the suspicious incidents notably moved from occurring overnight to happening in the daytime when Letby was working. An informal review conducted in June 2015 by a consultant and lead neonatologist at the Countess of Chester Hospital NHS Foundation Trust revealed troubling details regarding four unexplained collapses that occurred in the same unit. Three of these cases resulted in deaths in the same month. It was observed that Letby had been on shift on each occasion. The unit's consultants promptly reported these deaths to the Trust's committee responsible for addressing serious incidents. The committee classified the deaths as medication errors. Had they been classified as serious incidents involving unexpected deaths, an immediate investigation could have taken place if they were grouped together. The numbers of unexplained collapses were particularly abnormal. There had previously been only two or three deaths a year in the neonatal unit. What was also particularly unusual was that the babies did not respond to resuscitation attempts as they would be expected to. Usually babies that had got a heartbeat back would see an improvement in their breathing, but that did not happen in these cases, which was distinctly unusual. Detective Superintendent Paul Hughes, who later led the investigation, was told by two medical consultants that baby collapses which occurred during the spike had been unexpected and could not be explained, both of which were not usual with infant collapses in general. In October 2015, a ward manager conducted her own review, 
noting that Letby was the only staff member consistently present throughout these incidents of unexplained collapses and deaths. These findings were relayed to the lead neonatologist. Further concerns were voiced to management by the unit's consultants that same month. Concerns were either resisted by the trust executives or ignored. In February 2016, the lead neonatologist, along with other consultants, concluded a thematic review investigating five unexplained deaths and collapses within the unit. Their investigation determined that the only common factor in these cases was the presence of Letby. The lead neonatologist communicated the findings via an urgent email to the Trust's medical director, leading to an eventual meeting in May 2016. The executive team deemed it to be coincidental and no substantial action was taken. Reducing risk through audits and confidential enquiries across the UK project, MBR Race UK found a neonatal death rate at least 10% higher than expected between June 2015 and June 2016. Additionally, the neonatal death total in 2015 doubled that of the previous year. The mortality rate had risen above what might be considered normal rates. During a hospital visit in February 2016, the Care Quality Commission, CQC, was informed of difficulties in raising concerns with managers, but heard no mention of an elevated mortality rate. The CQC's report identified issues of short staffing and skill mix issues within the unit, yet it praised the overall positive culture of the trust, where staff felt well supported, able to raise concerns and develop professionally. On 24 June 2016, following the deaths of two triplet babies on that day and the previous day, the lead neonatologist phoned the duty executive demanding that Letby be removed from the unit. The duty executive insisted that Letby was safe to work and that she was happy to take responsibility if anything happened to any more babies under Letby's care. In late June 2016, the Trust's executive directors convened to address the question whether to involve law enforcement. By this time, seven unexpected deaths had taken place within the unit. The belief among these executives was that the indications of Letby's involvement were largely circumstantial and they suspected certain doctors of embarking on a misguided witch hunt. Moreover, they were concerned about potential harm to the Trust's reputation resulting from a police inquiry. Ultimately, they opted against engaging the police. The medical director and chief executive instead organised a review through the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health, RCPCH, which was initiated in September 2016. At the same time, the unit services were scaled back in July 2016, no longer accommodating premature births before the 32-week mark. Such cases were redirected to other hospitals in the northwest of England, such as Alderhay Children's Hospital. The Trust set a narrow scope for the review that excluded investigating Letby's actions or the deaths, but instead focused on the unit's general service. The RCPCH reported their findings to the medical director and chief executive in October 2016. They could not find a definitive explanation for the increase in mortality rate at the unit, but found some insufficient staffing and senior cover. The report recommended a detailed case review of each death. The medical director asked neonatologist Janne Hordon from Great Ormond Street Hospital to carry out the case reviews. Hordon responded she could not conduct a detailed review because of lack of time, but could provide a summary and did so after briefly reviewing the notes. She identified four cases that potentially benefit from local forensic review as to circumstances, personnel, etc. The board's chair at the time has said that he was misled about the scope of that review and its findings. Despite the thorough external independent review recommended by the RCPCH or the forensic review recommended by Horden, records of the hospital board meeting show the medical director telling board members that the RCPCH and Horden reviews 
concluded that the deaths in the neonatal unit were due to issues with leadership and timely intervention. In September 2016, Letby raised a formal grievance about her late June 2016 transfer from clinical duties to the hospital's Risk and Patient Safety Office. This grievance was upheld by the board in January 2017, which determined her removal had been orchestrated by the consultants with no hard evidence. They supported her return to the neonatal unit and offered her a placement at Alderhey Children's Hospital in Liverpool, plus support to develop advanced practice or a master's degree. The medical director also commented in the report that the Trust's intention was to protect Lucy Letby from these allegations. The chief executive had met with Letby and her parents on 22nd of December 2016 to apologise on behalf of the Trust and assure them that the doctors who made the allegations would be dealt with. He later ordered the consultants to send a letter of apology to Letby, which they did in February 2017. In March 2017, consultants asked management to involve the police after receiving advice from the regional neonatal lead, who suggested further investigation was needed. They then met with Cheshire Constabulary on 27 April 2017 to raise their concerns, with Letby due to return to work on 3rd of May 2017. The Trust publicly announced the involvement of the police in May 2017 stating this move was to seek assurances that enable us to rule out unnatural causes of death. The police's investigation was called Operation Hummingbird. Senior investigating officer Paul Hughes later said, the initial focus was around the hypotheses of what could have occurred, so generic hypotheses of it could be natural occurring deaths, it could be natural occurring collapses, it could be an organic reason, it could be a virus. And then one of the hypotheses was that, obviously, it could be inflicted harm. There were many cases that raised suspicion about Letby. For example, the first suspicious case occurred on 8th of June 2015. At 8pm, a healthy baby boy, a twin, was being cared for in Nursery 1 on the ward and the designated nurse was Letby. The boy had been handed over to Letby after she started her night shift, with the paediatric registrar having clocked off when Letby was 30 minutes into her shift. 26 minutes later, she called a doctor with the baby's state rapidly deteriorating. The baby died half an hour later, less than 90 minutes into Letby's shift. The paediatric registrar later testified that when she heard about the death of the child the next day after returning to work, that it was a big surprise and completely out of the blue and very upsetting. He showed no signs of any problems throughout the day. He was handling well. I had no concerns at all for him or his twin sister. A fellow nurse said that when the baby started deteriorating, she saw Letby standing over the infant's incubator and originally did not intervene. However, the nurse then did when she realised he was not recovering under Letby's care. Doctors attending the scene said that child A developed an unusual blue and white mottling on his skin after collapsing, which they said they had never seen before. This symptom later occurred in other babies that were believed to have been intentionally injected with air. The day after Child A's death, Letby searched for his parents on Facebook. About 28 hours after Child A's death, his twin sister, Child B, also collapsed and had to be resuscitated. After Child A's death, the parents had spent the day with Child B in the nursery with her, but were persuaded to go and rest before the baby's sudden crash. Tests later showed loops of gas-filled bowel in the child. As a result, it was later concluded that the baby had been injected with air. Letby had fed the baby 25 minutes before their collapse, and the child had the same unusual rash on her skin as first seen on child A hours earlier, indicating that they had also been injected with air 
On the 3rd of July 2018, Letby was arrested by police on suspicion of eight counts of murder and six counts of attempted murder, following a year-long investigation. Letby's home at Chester was searched by police following her arrest. After Letby's arrest, the investigation was widened to include Liverpool Women's Hospital, another location at which Letby had worked. Letby was bailed on 6th of July 2018 as the police continued their inquiries. She was re-arrested on 10th of June 2019 on suspicion of eight cases of murder and nine cases of attempted murder in relation to the cases described before and released on bail on 13th of June. She was arrested again on 10th November 2020. There were thousands of exhibits in the investigation, 16,571 of which were not even used as evidence, and some of the items were themselves thousands of pages long. The 2019 arrest and bailing had been made as by this time three further cases of attempted murder had been identified, which investigators needed to question Letby further on, and as Letby had been found to have written extensively about the case on her 2018 arrest, Detectives wished to see whether she had written anything further in the year while she was under investigation. On 13th of March 2020, Letby was placed on an interim suspension by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. On 11th of November 2020, Letby was charged with eight counts of murder and ten counts of attempted murder. She was denied bail and remanded in police custody. The Crown Prosecution Service were convinced to approve all of the charges Cheshire Constabulary requested against Letby after it reviewed the evidence the force collected against her. Letby denied all 22 charges against her, blaming the deaths on hospital hygiene and staffing levels. On 18th of August 2023, Andrea Sutcliffe, Chief Executive and Registrar of the Nursing and Midwifery Council, stated that Letby remains suspended from our register and we will now move forward with our regulatory action seeking to strike her off the register. Letby's trial began at Manchester Crown Court on 10th October 2022 before Mr Justice Goss. She pleaded not guilty to seven counts of murder and 15 counts of attempted murder. Letby's parents and the families of the victims attended the trial. The child victims were referred to as Child A to Child Q. The press secrecy around the identities of the 17 babies and nine colleagues who gave evidence was rarely seen outside proceedings involving matters of national security. Two years before the criminal trial, Mrs Justice Stein banned the identification of the living victims until their 18th birthdays. Parents wanted their identifying information to be protected, though Stein ruled that one parent's profession as a physician was relevant because of his medical expertise and that it would not make that parent identifiable to the public. Several witnesses requested anonymity, including a doctor with whom Letby was said to be infatuated. The judge approved these requests, ruling that getting testimony from the colleagues was more important than them being publicly identifiable. The prosecutor said that Letby was a constant malevolent presence in the hospital's neonatal unit. There were witnesses that had apparently walked in during or just after Letby's attacks. A mother of one of the victims said she had walked in on Letby trying to kill her baby with Letby saying, trust me, I'm a nurse, when interrupted. Another mother had walked in hearing her baby screaming to find her child had blood around his mouth with Letby in the room. Letby told the mother to go back to the ward. The baby's condition soon worsened and it later died in its parents' arms. The senior medical consultant who had not recommended a post-mortem examination at the time said later in court that she regretted her decision which she said she had taken with a view to avoiding any further distress to the parents, who had expressed they were not keen to have a post-mortem carried out. Afterwards, Letby bathed the deceased baby in front of her parents.
Another mother of a baby who had died in October 2015 recounted an uncomfortable experience of Letby bathing her child, recounting, Lucy Letby and another nurse asked me if I wanted to bathe my baby. While we were bathing her, Lucy came back in. She was smiling and kept going on about how she was present at the first bath and how our daughter had loved it. I wished that she would just stop talking. Letby's apparent obsession with this baby and her family later continued. She sent a sympathy card to the parents after the baby's death on the day of its funeral. Upon Letby's arrest, it was found on her phone that she had photographed the card before she sent it and had still kept pictures of it. In a text message sent to a friend on 9th of April 2016, two hours after the collapse of Child M, Letby wrote, Work has been shit, but I have just won 135 on Grand National. And in a group chat after the winning bet, Unpacking party sounds good to me with my flavoured vodka, haha. -ha. On the afternoon of 22nd of June 2016, following a holiday, she texted a friend, Probably be back in with a bang lol. Child O died the next day. The texts were seen as important by the Crown Prosecution Service as it saw them in some instances as appearing to be similar to a live blogging of events. Letby had also told a colleague that taking Child A to the mortuary was the hardest thing she ever had to do. Letby had also searched for the parents of several infant victims on Facebook, in one case on the anniversary of a baby's death. In total, Letby had searched for 11 of the families affected. When police had asked her why she had searched up the parents of Child O on the anniversary of its death, she had responded that she could not explain why she would be doing it. The prosecutor asserted Letby had injected air into the bloodstream of two victims and had used insulin to murder others. It was also revealed during the trial that Letby had to be told more than once not to enter a room where the parents of one of the victims were grieving. Letby said, It's always me when it happens. Letby's defence lawyer said that Letby was a dedicated nurse in a system which has failed, that the prosecution's case was driven by the assumption that someone was doing deliberate harm combined with the coincidence on certain occasions of Miss Letby's presence, and that there had been a massive failure of care in a busy hospital neonatal unit, far too great to blame on one person. The defence argued that extraordinary bleeding in a baby boy murdered by Letby could have been caused by a rigid wire or tube. The therapeutic use of insulin was denied by Letby's colleagues. No baby on the unit was being prescribed insulin, and so there was no reason why any baby should have been given it. The insulin was kept in a locked fridge next to a nurse's station. A key piece of evidence was also given by a consultant who recounted that in February 2016, he had walked in and seen Letby standing over a baby and watching when they seemed to have stopped breathing. Letby was not doing anything despite the baby desaturating. When he asked her what was going on, she responded that he had only then just started declining. This baby went on to survive their collapse. By this stage, all seven of the paediatrician consultants who worked on the neonatal ward agreed. Something was seriously wrong in the department. The deaths and near deaths that were happening on the unit could not be medically explained. All the babies involved had been expected to live, and so their deaths came out of the blue. Previously, in the majority of times the premature babies had collapsed, it had already been expected, and in the very rare cases it was not already expected, it could still be medically explained, unlike in all of these cases. A paediatrician testified that he and other clinicians had previously raised concerns about Letby, but were told by hospital administration that they should not really be saying such things and not to make a fuss. Another doctor testified that Letby commented an hour before one victim died. He's not leaving here alive, is he? Between March and June 2016, another three babies almost died while under Letby's care. 
Towards the end of June, she was helping to care for triplets. One died at 6pm one evening, and another of the triplets died less than 24 hours later, both under Letby's watch. Both of them had been in very good health, and the deaths on consecutive days were causing staff considerable distress and shock, with the notable exception of Letby, who merely told one consultant that she would be back on shift the next day when she was asked if she was upset after the events of the two days. This was not the first time that twins, triplets, had collapsed within 24 hours of each other while under Letby's care as two twins had experienced collapses on consecutive days in August 2015. Only hours after one of the twins had died that month, the other became seriously unwell, and it was only during the police investigation and after analysis of a blood sample that it was found that someone had intentionally poisoned the baby with insulin. This evidence had been missed for two years. The insulin which had not been prescribed to the child, was identifiable as exogenous pharmaceutical insulin, as C-peptide would be present in the specimen if the insulin had been produced by the baby laboratory analysis, also showed that baby L had been poisoned with insulin. This was also significant as only hours later, his twin brother, baby M, inexplicably collapsed while under Letby's care, but managed to survive after 30 minutes of resuscitation. It was believed that Letby had injected air into the latter's bloodstream. The prosecution also noted that, although by this point she was not supposed to work night shifts, Letby was caring for child L, as she specifically volunteered to do an extra shift to care for it. The prosecution arguing that she had seen an opportunity here to kill child L, where she had failed previously with child F. Letby herself accepted at trial that the results showed that some victims had been deliberately injected with insulin and did not contest that someone must have administered it to them. The night after Letby tried to murder child F, she went salsa dancing. Importantly, it was discovered that Letby had falsified patient records, covering her tracks by changing the time some babies collapsed to make sure she could not be placed at the scene. Criminal psychologist Dr David Holmes states that the varied methods she used to attack her victims, such as insulin and air injections and overfeeding milk, would all have been specifically chosen as things that would dissipate and not be easily detected afterwards. On the fourth day of trial, the prosecution presented a handwritten note from Letby which said, I am evil, I did this, and that she killed them on purpose because she couldn't take care of them. It further stated, I killed them, and I'll never marry or have children. I'll never know what it's like to have a family. The defence argued that the note was the anguished outpouring of a young woman in fear and despair when she realises the enormity of what's being said about her in the moment to herself, and said that Letby had written it when she was dealing with employment issues, including a grievance procedure with the NHS Trust. Several other notes from Letby were shown in court, two of which said, Why, how has this happened? What process has led to this current situation? What allegations have been made and by who? Do they have written evidence to support their comments? And, I haven't done anything wrong and they have no evidence, so why have I had to hide away? The prosecution said that Letby was expressing through the notes her frustration about not being allowed back to work in the neonatal unit. The police had also discovered that Letby had secretly kept medical documents at home relating to the care of the children. Jurors were told that 257 nursing handover sheets were found at addresses linked to Letby, of which 21 related to babies she had allegedly harmed. Her trial judge stated at sentencing that she had kept documents as morbid records of the dreadful events surrounding the collapses of her victims and what she had done to them. The sensitive documents, which should never have left the hospital, contained the names of the babies and the documents had been stuffed and hidden away in the shopping bags under her bed. One note of medications given to a baby boy who had managed to survive after being on the brink of death, written on a paper towel, 
was found under Letby's bed. Letby claimed at trial that she had no means of destroying the confidential notes, yet the court heard a paper shredder, which could have done so, was found in her home. Her diary was also found to be marked with the initials of the babies she killed on the exact days they died. It was within this diary that the note that stated, I am evil, I did this, was tucked inside. Letby herself gave evidence to the court in May 2023, breaking down in tears and claiming she was made to feel as though she were incompetent, but meant no harm. When asked why she wrote the I am evil, I did this, Letby said, I felt at the time that if I'd done something wrong, I must be such an evil, awful person. I'd somehow been incompetent and had done something wrong which had affected those babies. Letby said that the allegations had negatively impacted her mental health, saying, I don't think you can be accused of anything worse than that. I just changed as a person, my mental health deteriorated, I felt isolated from my friends on the unit. From a self-confidence point of view, it made me question everything about myself. It was observed that Letby eventually began to lose her composure in the witness box, asking for a number of unplanned breaks. It was also observed that she only broke down when talking about herself and the impact it had on her, which the prosecution said was telling. She had not shown any emotion in relation to the fate of the babies. It was also noted that she repeatedly contradicted herself, muddled up her story and became more and more frustrated with the prosecution's questions, which was unlike her usual calm demeanour. On 10th of July 2023, after a nine-month trial, the jury was sent to deliberate. Verdicts were returned by the jury on several days, starting on 8th August, but it was not until the final verdicts were returned on 18th of August that the verdicts were made public. Letby was found guilty of seven counts of murder of seven babies. She killed them by injecting them with air, overfeeding them, poisoning them with insulin and assaulting them with medical tools. She is the most prolific serial killer of children in modern British history. Letby was also found guilty of seven counts of attempted murder of six infants. Letby was found not guilty on two counts of attempted murder. The jury was unable to reach verdicts on six further attempted murder charges. Nicholas Johnson KC asked the court for 28 days to consider whether a retrial would be sought for these six counts. 2023, Letby was sentenced to life imprisonment with a whole life order, the most severe sentence possible under English law. She is the fourth woman in UK legal history to receive such a sentence. Goss said that Letby committed a cruel, calculated and cynical campaign of child murder involving the smallest and most vulnerable of children. In closing, he stated, there was a deep malevolence bordering on sadism. You let be have no remorse. There are no mitigating factors. The offences are of sufficient severity to require a whole life order. Letby opted not to attend the sentencing hearing and as such heard neither the various victim impact statements which were read out, nor her sentence being passed. On 15 September 2023, the Court of Appeal Criminal Division confirmed that Letby had lodged an appeal against all her convictions. At a hearing on 25 September 2023, the CPS confirmed that there would be a retrial on one of the six counts of attempted murder against Letby on which the jury at the original trial could not reach a verdict. A date of 10 June 2024 has been set, but the trial will not be conducted until after the Court of Appeal has considered whether or not to grant Letby's appeal against existing convictions. During Letby's trial, the prosecution suggested several possible motives for the killings, including boredom, that she got a thrill from the events surrounding the deaths and that she enjoyed playing God. The prosecution told the jury that he was controlling things. She was enjoying what was going on. She was predicting things that she knew was going to happen. 
Another possible motivation suggested by the prosecution was that the killings were to gain the attention of a married doctor with whom Letby allegedly had a secret relationship. She had texted this doctor non-stop during some night shifts, minutes before attacking babies. One sheet of paper found in Letby's office and shown to the court was an annual leave form on which Letby had written phrases including, I trusted you with everything and loved you. You were my best friend and please help me. The doctor was one of those called when a baby rapidly deteriorated. Letby denied all these suggestions, including the allegation that she had a relationship with the married doctor. During her trial, it was noted that Letby broke down for the first time, only when this doctor, who she allegedly had a crush on, gave evidence and she tried to leave the dock without permission at this point. When questioned why she did this, Letby said she had felt unwell, and when questioned, she claimed she didn't know what Go Commando meant, even though the doctor she allegedly fancied had sent it to her in an apparently flirtatious text, to which she replied to with laughing emojis. After Letby's conviction, the UK government ordered an independent inquiry into the circumstances surrounding the murders. The Department of Health and Social Care said the inquiry would examine the circumstances surrounding the deaths and incidents, including how concerns raised by clinicians were dealt with. It was affirmed that the inquiry would be non-statutory, so witnesses could not be compelled to give evidence and inquests would still be necessary. The Trust's medical director, chief executive and the nursing director at the time of the murders all commented they would fully cooperate with the inquiry. The medical director retired in August 2018 and the chief executive resigned in September 2018 after signing a non-disclosure agreement. A small number of her friends and former colleagues have continued to believe in Letby's innocence. After the verdict, conspiracy theories soon began circulating on the internet, doubting the outcome. The Letby case has joined a trend where amateur internet sleuths purport to have uncovered evidence suggesting that a miscarriage of justice has taken place. Amongst this, statistician Richard D. Gill and lawyer Neil McKenzie KC, who co-authored a work with others on the use of statistics in court cases, have also cast doubt on the outcome. On 21st August 2023, it was announced that the nursing director at the Countess of Chester Hospital at the time Letby was based there had been suspended from her job as a senior nursing officer at Northern Care Alliance NHS Foundation Trust with immediate effect because of information that came to light during the trial. The Nursing and Midwifery Council subsequently announced she would face an investigation into her fitness to practice. She and other executives at the hospital have been accused of ignoring warnings about Letby. It was reported that the British government were examining how Letby's pension can be stopped. The NHS pension scheme regulations provide for a forfeit of pensions after a conviction of certain crimes. The government announced that it would introduce new powers to compel convicted criminals to attend sentencing hearings. Thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to like this video so YouTube can push it out. And also be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. We have weekly true crime videos from the UK and around the world.